Morgan Stanley predicted that 45% of women between the ages of 25 and 44 will be single and childless by 2030. They are panicking because 45% of them will be single by 2030. I saw this post on the internet that says study predicts that 45% of women will be single and childless by 2030. So since the assumption is that's a bad thing, I left a comment. I said some of y'all fail to understand that this is more of an assessment about the state of men rather than women. You can blame men all you want, but the truth is you did this to yourselves. You can avoid accountability, but you can't avoid reality. That single childless women very generally tend to be much more unhappy, much unhealthier, especially mentally, much lonelier and much less fulfilled than women who have a husband and children. This is just statistically true. This has been proven through many different types of studies and research. Oh, yes, One geez. side, it's, it's it, look, that's why American relationships are failures. That's why American women on a global context are the worst for relationships long term period. That's why the divorce rate is the highest in the world here. And that's why on the desirability level, American women are at the bottom of the global barrel. This is all statistically documented from men because at the end of the day, the ones who decide if a woman is valuable for a relationship is men. Well, the man is the person that's going to have to obviously Concede. propose and buy the ring and, and all that stuff. And give them the ring. Real By 2030, 45% of working women ages 25 to 45 will be non-married, no kids, single. So you might say, well, what's wrong with that? If you think that you're going to genuinely be fulfilled in life because you made money, best of luck to you. Now, let's take a look at a working woman who says she is deeply unfulfilled with her life because she doesn't have a family, despite having a career. I'm 25 this week, and if I'm honest, I'm terrified. I'm terrified because I feel like a failure and i don't know if anyone else watching this understands that feeling but my life looks nothing like i thought it would at this age when i was a kid i always said by 25 i'll be married or i'll have a kid i'll have this amazing career and i've done a lot of cool things don't get me wrong but i'm about to be 25 and most nights i go to bed feeling so lonely and then most days i wake up feeling lost like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I have this overwhelming thought of, is this it? Is this all there is? When you're 25 years old and you live alone and you have no partner and you have maybe two friends and you've struggled with mental illness your entire life, there's just not much to wake up for, is there? They bought into the lie that their career was the most important thing in their life. But now it's coming back to haunt them as they are left unfulfilled by the dream that feminism sold them. The thing with men is if they do something and they feel like it doesn't get a positive response, they will stop doing it. So it's like if a man started to bring flowers to his wife every week and at some point he just felt like she's just very neutral about it. Okay, here's my flowers, puts it to the side, that's it. There's gonna come a point where he stops giving the flowers. But if she's always showing how much she loves it and appreciates it and, and she's pouring back into him, he's gonna keep giving her those flowers. This example paints a larger picture of how men are being underappreciated, taken for granted and demonized, which is one of the many reasons we are walking away. Ladies, here is a hard dating fact you're really gonna have to accept. These good men you say you're looking for, they aren't out chasing women. They're working there to the bone, chasing their dreams. Hell, it's more than likely they're not even going to approach you. I saw this really cute guy at the grocery store the other day. So naturally, I followed him to the checkout counter. And when he gave the cashier his credit card, I peeped it to see what his name was. And then I Googled him and found his social media profiles. What? I was able to tell that he was single. So I went through his friends list and I found his mother's page. There's a word for all of this. And then I looked through his mother's page and I saw that she was a member of this book club that's in my area. So I sent a request to join the book club. So I went to the book club meeting and I met his mom there and we bonded over some books that we both liked. And she just thought I was so nice. Little did she know. And I brought it up randomly in conversation that I was single. And she let me know that she had a son that was single also that lived in the area. And maybe it would be cool for us to get together and chat sometime. So I gave her my number, which she gave to her son. 
and this morning he texted me and asked if I'd like to get together this weekend and do something. So I guess we're gonna go on a date. I'm really excited. We don't care. You would think she would have enough common sense to not tell the world she's stalking a random guy she saw at the grocery store. But then I remembered, this type of behavior isn't an issue as long as a woman is doing it. Take a look. If the roles were reversed, we already know where he would be right now. Before we continue, brother, I would like to ask you to like the video if you have enjoyed it this far, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. It's interesting that she felt the need to pull her phone out and record before asking him that. They really do anything for attention. A picture with me? No, thank you. No. Why not? Go ahead, B. I'm, I'm like one of your biggest fans. Come on, I've been watching you for years. Not me. B, look no? how beautiful. Must be talking about somebody else, but no. not me. Huh? Has a guy ever like, reacted this way to no, you? No, never. I'm like quite shocked, actually. Has anyone like said you guys look beautiful today? No. No? Yeah, you guys should work on that. <laughs> <laughs> that also plays into the systematic stuff that I was talking about. Oh, Lord. Because oh. a lot of women can't get jobs in construction. So they have get you ever tried to be down. a concreter? Yeah. No, but I totally would. I wish you weren't a liar. Okay, why aren't you? Because I'm not educated on it. Why don't CNA. you go and get educated on concreting? I totally would. Like, as soon as I get things straightened out, sure. I want a different field. Well, I'm tired of the medical let, let me, field. Let me tell you this, and you can disagree with me if you'd like. You wouldn't last two minutes as a concreter. Because, unfortunately... I'd like to try to prove people wrong. Who gives this shit? In the modern world, you can think that all you want. And that's because your life is so comfortable that you can have that strain of thought. But the fact of the matter is that I did concreting for mm. a few months, and I didn't last and I'm not a weak guy, but these guys are some of the hardest people you'll ever meet in your life. They are up at the crack of dawn every day, breaking their backs. Oh, you yeah. would not last a single day. You can sit here and say girl power all you'd like, you wouldn't last a day, I guarantee. He ain't lying. It doesn't matter what you do. If you aren't doing it exactly how they want, they're going to complain or post you on social media for attention and validation from strangers at the expense of their own husband. Never kick a man who's trying to get up. Skinny dude at the gym, the fat guy jogging around the block or on the treadmill, the broke dude starting a side hustle trying to better himself, the shy kid who's dropping cringy pickup lines, help and encourage each other. Don't put each other down. The world is in dire need of men who try and do and encourage one another.